after this, a world where electric vehicles are faster, smarter, and more affordable than ever before, a world where cars can charge in the time it takes to grab a cup of coffee, where autonomous driving isn't a distant dream, but a present reality, and where flying cars aren't sci-fi anymore, they're science fact. Sounds futuristic, right? Well, guess what? The future is already here. It's just not evenly distributed. And if you want to see it in action, you need to look no further than China. So today, we're going to explore why China doesn't need the U.S. market to succeed, how they're outpacing the competition, and what this means for the future of transportation. Isn't it so interesting that now when Tesla is nosediving that we're getting this new EV vehicle, the Slate? No, it's not interesting. This is Jeff Bezos. I'm sorry, like, look at this ugly EV. This In 2025, first of all, this ugly US EV compared to what China has already been making for EV trucks. Like, you cannot tell me these companies and billionaires are not laughing at Americans offering them this and not allowing this into the country. Not only that, but this truck kind of sucks. Even for the price, it kind of sucks. This truck is what probably like Chinese EV manufacturers would have demoed maybe 15, 20 years ago. Meaning the technology to make this better and more efficient exists. But billionaires will only go and bring you the next little thing in the market because they know there's all this room to sell you more and more and more as time comes. Kind of like, you know, the iPhone theory. They improve the iPhone little by little each time so you pay for a new one. When in reality, they had the te technology to make it way better, way better, years ago. But why would they just give you the best version when they could sell you the slightly upgraded version every single time over and over and over again? Capitalism. Ultimately, please do not trade out one EV billionaire to another EV billionaire. The best EVs on the international market are Chinese EVs. Price, performance, efficiency, everything. So if the slate car is coming onto your feed at a very convenient time and being pushed onto the market at a very convenient time, it's because they're trying to push for another American EV. Oh look, it's a truck to keep that power for American EVs or anything else like that to another billionaire. Yeah, first off, the slate. Um, if this is supposed to be America's big answer to the EV revolution, then they've got a problem. Look, I'm not saying American automakers aren't capable of making great cars. They are. But when you put something like this next to what Chinese companies have been doing for years, it feels embarrassingly outdated. I mean, look at BYD's Auto 3, Neo's ET7, and Xpeng's G9. These vehicles aren't just ahead in terms of design. They're packed with cutting-edge tech, too. Um, we're talking insane ranges, faster charging speeds, smarter AI systems, all at prices that make the slate look overpriced and underwhelming. Don't even get me started on truck comparisons. Like, seriously, check out models like the Maxus T90 or the FAW's electric pickups. Stuff China has already been producing and tell me this isn't laughable by comparison. And let's talk about capitalism for a bit. Whether it's iPhones or Teslas, companies know they can milk. They can milk us for incremental upgrades year after year instead of giving us the best stuff up front. And honestly, it makes sense why billionaires would play that game. It keeps profits rolling, right? But here's the thing. China doesn't seem to be playing by those same rules. Their EV strategy feels less about squeezing every last penny out of the consumers and more about dominating the global market through sheer value and innovation. And speaking of domination, let's just acknowledge how far ahead China is in building an entire EV ecosystem. They've got massive investments in battery production, lithium mining, charging networks, you name it. Meanwhile, the U.S. is still trying to figure out how to build enough chargers along highways. That kind of head start gives Chinese manufacturers a huge advantage, both domestically and internationally. 
This is the Shanghai International Auto Show. It's one of the industry's most important, not only because China is the biggest market in the world for cars, but it dominates the auto supply chain. BYD, for example, has reduced the charging time to just five minutes, so about what it takes to fill up at a gas station. There are even cars that fly. It's rare to see a Chinese-made electric vehicle on American roads because the cars and all of the components are made in China and are heavily tariffed. I feel like we're at least like five to ten years ahead here. Things that you know the U.S. kind of talks about happening in the future are already happening right now. We're seeing the the level of autonomy with the lidar, the cars driving, and just the overall tech. It's it's unbelievable. It's hard to really describe. You really have to show it. China doesn't just buy the most cars; they build them too. They control about seventy to eighty percent of the global battery supply chain, including critical minerals like lithium and cobalt. That gives companies like BYD an insane advantage. For instance, BYD's Blade battery tech can charge in just five minutes, comparable to filling up a gas tank. Meanwhile. The U.S. is still debating how to roll out basic charging infrastructure, and flying cars—they're、uh, not sci-fi anymore. Companies like Xpeng are already testing them in urban areas. It's part of China's broader push into smart mobility solutions that integrate AI, autonomy, and green energy.、Uh, speaking of autonomy, Chinese EVs are leagues ahead in self-driving tech. Brands like Neo and Li Auto are deploying level three and even level four autonomous systems with advanced lidar sensors. Stuff the U.S. is still years away from scaling. But here's the thing: you rarely see these innovations on American roads because the tariffs and trade restrictions. The U.S. slaps heavy taxes on Chinese-made EVs and components, making them less competitive despite their superior tech. But let's be real: the gap between what China's doing and what the U.S. is talking about is massive. Experts estimate Chinese EV tech is at least five to ten years ahead, especially in areas in like battery efficiency, autonomy, and integration of AI. BYD is beating the brakes off of Tesla. BYD is the number one EV company in the world. And its profits doubled in the first quarter, while Tesla's crashed by more than 71 percent. Why did BYD do so well? Simple: demand for its cars went through the roof. While BYD sales surged in China, Tesla's fell by more than 50 percent in the first quarter. And demand for BYD surged around the globe as well for its superior price to value. BYD is why Tesla has taken a hit in so many overseas markets. Now, do you see why they can't allow BYD in America? Because Tesla sales would go down the drain, just like they've already gone down the drain everywhere else. Now, let me reiterate for those who have a hard time understanding: Tesla sales started falling before Elon messed around with the government. BYD overtook them last year, and people were already choosing BYD over Tesla. Long before he ever got into Doge, so don't make this an Elon victimization narrative. Elon laughed at BYD more than over a decade ago, and now that same company that he mocked has surpassed him big time. He should have innovated when he had a chance, but now it's too little, too late. And for that reason, Elon, you've just made the D3 list—a podcast about dumb, desperate, and diabolical business decisions. You know the stats don't lie. BYD is crushing it. They're now the number one EV company in the world, and their profits doubled in Q1, while Tesla's plummeted by over 70 percent. How simple? Demand. BYD sold nearly half a million EVs in in Q1 alone, thanks to their unbeatable price-to-value ratio. Meanwhile, Tesla's sales in China dropped by over 50 percent during the same period. And globally, BYD's growing market share is eating into Tesla's dominance. Everywhere from Europe to Southeast Asia. So why is BYD winning? It's not just about affordability; it's about innovation. BYD makes its own batteries, like the Ultra Safe Blade battery, which charges faster and lasts longer. They also offer plug and play options for different markets, whether it's affordable compacts or luxury models. Tesla, on the other hand, 
has been stuck tweaking the same lineup without major breakthroughs lately. Elon laughed at BYD over a decade ago, but now they've surpassed him in both tech and sales. Karma, it really is poetic. There's so much more to China's electric vehicle market than you may know. BYD has outpaced Tesla, but have you heard of Xiaomi, Biche, and Cherry? How about Zeker? We got exclusive access to test drive one of their newest cars. It's a 7 GT, we're gonna take it for a test drive. This is in the style of a wagon, but it, it's very much like a sports car. One of the biggest selling parts of this car is its speed. It can go zero to 60 in just about three seconds. You can feel the pickup. This is great. There are dozens and dozens of EV brands here in China forcing Western brands into a race with fast growing competition. One thing to consider also, BYD isn't even allowed to fully enter the US market yet because of tariffs and trade restrictions. If it did, Tesla would have an even bigger problem on its hands. American consumers might finally see what they've been missing. EVs that are cheaper, better, and more advanced. So yeah, if I were Elon, I'd be worried too. BYD gets a lot of headlines, but there's so much more happening in China. Uh, brands like Xiaomi, uh, Sherry, and, and Zeker, uh, are, they're all stepping up. And let's talk about Zeker for a second. They're making waves with models like uh, 001 and now this 7GT we're seeing here. It's not just another EV. It's, it's proof that Chinese automakers are blending performance, design, and practicality um, in ways Western brands struggle to match. If you look at the 7GT, for example, this thing is wild. It's got the sleekness of a sports car, but the utility of a wagon. Uh, zero to 60 in three seconds, that's like supercar territory. And it's not just about speed. This car feels refined, powerful, and packed with tech. The fact that China can roll out vehicles like this while keeping prices competitive is, is mind-blowing. China's EV landscape is crowded, but in the best way possible. There are dozens of brands pushing each other, competing against each other to innovate faster, better, and cheaper. Meanwhile, Western automakers are stuck playing catch-up. Look at how companies like uh, Ford and Volkswagen are struggling to compete in China. They're getting crushed by local brands that just keep raising the bar. So yeah, while Tesla might dominate the narrative in the West, over here in China, it's a whole different story. These brands aren't waiting around. They're racing ahead, forcing global competition to step up their game. So here we are, the undeniable truth about China's electric vehicle revolution. They're not just ahead of the curve. They're redefining what the curve even looks like. From BYD's dominance to the rise of brands like Neo, Xiaomi, and Zeker, China isn't waiting for the rest of the world to catch up. They're setting the pace. And while Western automakers scramble to compete, China is busy building an entire ecosystem around EVs. Um, we're talking about batteries, charging networks, autonomous tech, and even flying cars. The big question now isn't whether China will lead the future of mobility, it's how quickly the rest of the world can adapt to their standards. Because let's be real, when it comes to EVs, China doesn't need the US market to succeed. But if they decide to push harder globally, the ripple effects will be felt everywhere. If you found this video eye-opening or maybe even a little bit interesting, let me know in the comments. What do you think about Chinese EV dominance? Are Western automakers doomed or is there still hope for them to turn things around? Drop your thoughts below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.